Hello my dear friends welcome back to my channel and I hope that you are enjoying learning chemistry on my channel and if you are really enjoying then please do subscribe my channel and press the bell icon. So today I am here in front of you with my yet another video and in this video I am going to discuss some common thermodynamic terms. In my previous videos I introduced you to the chemical thermodynamics and I also discussed its objectives and limitations. So today I am going to discuss some very basic terms of chemical thermodynamics. So let us start. So first term is system and surroundings. So I have been using this word system in my previous videos also that a system is going from this place to that place or system is going from state of high energy to low energy. So what do we mean by a system? So system is the part of the universe under investigation or under observation. Or here I can say under thermodynamic observation. For example, I am teaching a class in a classroom. Then that classroom is a system and the rest part of the universe is surrounding. Or I am performing an experiment in a lab. The place where I am performing the experiment with my equipments or the chemicals, a system and the rest part of the universe is surroundings. Okay. And the system and the surroundings are separated by a definite boundary. And that boundary could be real or imaginary. So let us understand this with the help of an example. So I have enclosed a gas inside a container and this container is also fitted with a piston. Okay, then the walls of the container and the piston is serving as a boundary. But this boundary is the real boundary because we can see this boundary, we can touch this boundary, we can feel this boundary. Okay, but the boundaries can also be imaginary. Suppose I want to study the temperature or the atmospheric pressure or climate of a particular region on the earth. Then what I have to do, I have to imagine the boundaries of that particular area. Otherwise there are no boundaries. But I have to imagine that this much area I am going to study. So those boundaries are what? Imaginary boundaries. Okay. So boundaries could be real or it could be imaginary. But the boundaries are very important because if we want to study the effect of pressure, volume or temperature on the system then that effect will be studied through these boundaries. For example, if I want to study the effect of pressure then that effect will be studied through boundaries. For example, I want to increase the pressure on this system then what I will do? I will press the piston downwards. Okay, so what is happening? The effect of pressure is being studied with the help of this boundary. And if I want to study the effect of temperature, then so suppose I want to increase the temperature of system. Then how it will take place? Then the heat will be absorbed by the system through its boundaries in this way. Okay. So, so the effect of temperature, pressure, volume is studied through these boundaries. So boundaries are very important. So I hope that you have understood what are what is system and what is surrounding. Now next is types of system. Okay, so first I am discussing open system. A system is said to be open system if it exchange energy as well as matter with the surrounding. For example, I have a hot cup of tea here. A hot of, hot cup of tea. And you will find that after some time, the temperature of the tea decreases. If, you're, if you have not taken the tea, then the temperature of the tea will decrease. And this means that this tea has lost heat to the surroundings. And at the same time, the vapors are also going out. Vapors are the matter. So this means this cup of tea is exchanging heat as well as matter with the surrounding and heat is the form of energy. 
So this is an example of what? Open system. I can have another example. I have a glass of water. Okay. And the water is normal water. And the temperature of this water is lower than the surrounding. Then what will happen? Then the heat will flow inside. Okay. In this case, in the case of hot tea, heat was giving, uh, going out. And in this case, heat will enter into the system. So heat will enter into the system and at the same time the vapor will go out. Understanding? So this means that here the heat is also being exchanged and vapors are also going out. Again, an open system. Now let us, these two were the physical systems. Let us uh, study a chemical reaction. Here, what I have done, I have taken some marble pieces. Marble means to say calcium carbonate. And I have added SCL from outside. Okay, and this is open vessel. The reaction which is taking place is the calcium carbonate. It is reacting with hydrochloric acid, giving us calcium chloride, water, carbon dioxide and energy in the form of heat. Then obviously the heat which is generated during this reaction, it will go out and simultaneously this carbon dioxide will also escape from the system. So heat is the form of energy and carbon dioxide is gas is a form of matter. So this chemical reaction is exchanging both energy as well as matter. So this is also an example of a open system. Next is closed system. A system is said to be a closed system if it exchange only energy with the surrounding, not matter. For example, I have taken hot water in a closed container or metallic container having conducting walls because conducting walls are very important for the transference or the movement of heat. So I have hot water inside this container and now the container is closed. Now the vapor will not escape. This means the matter will not be exchanged but the heat can go out because the hot water now the heat will go out of the system. This means in this case the matter is not being exchanged only the heat or the energy is being exchanged. So this is an example of what closed system. If further if this reaction is again carried out in a closed container having conducting walls then what will happen? Walls are conducting then heat can go outside the system mean to say energy can be exchanged with the surrounding but now what the container is closed now the carbon dioxide cannot escape from this container this means that now the matter cannot be exchanged so only energy can be exchanged so these are the examples of what closed system my another uh, type of system is isolated system a system which neither exchange energy nor matter with the surrounding. Okay, there will be no exchange. Matter will not be exchanged or energy will not be exchanged. Example is very familiar. You people all are familiar with the thermos flask you have at, a, at your homes. And we know that the thermos flask have insulated walls. It does not allow the flow of heat or the matter uh, outside from it. Okay, and if you place a hot liquid like hot coffee, hot tea, or hot milk inside that thermos flask, it keep uh, it uh, it keeps it hot for a longer time. Or because heat will not go out. And if I have placed a cold liquid inside it then that liquid will remain cold for a longer time. It will remain cool for a longer time. Why? Because heat will not enter into the thermos flask. So such type of system is called as isolated system. So these three types of systems are very common and very important in chemical thermodynamics and they will be studied in detail. Another type of system which we have is homogeneous system. A system is said to be homogeneous if it exchanges 
sorry a system is said to be homogeneous if it is uniform throughout consisting of a single phase for example if i have pure liquid or a pure solid which have only one phase it could be a mixture of two miscible liquids which are completely miscible understanding or another example is a solid which is completely soluble in water for example when we dissolve salt in water then the system is homogeneous because consisting of only liquid phase sugar is also completely soluble again we have only one phase that is liquid phase so such type of system is called as homogeneous system another type of system is heterogeneous system and what do we mean by heterogeneous system a system is said to be heterogeneous if it is not uniform throughout it will have two or more phases and those phases will be separated by a definite boundary examples are liquid and vapors here this is a closed container i have liquid here and we have vapors here so two phases are there and there is a definite boundary between these two phases so this is an example of what heterogeneous system another example is mixture of two immiscible liquids for example oil and water so we have oil and water will water will be here and oil will be here and there will be a definite boundary between these two phases so such type of system consisting of two or more than two phases are called as heterogeneous system another example of system is macroscopic system so what do we mean by a macroscopic system a system which is composed of a large number of particles is called as macroscopic system or i can also define it in a way that a system which is having a large amount of substance a large quantity of a substance is called as macroscopic system okay and the properties associated with this macroscopic system are called as macroscopic properties which i have discussed with you in my previous video okay so i hope that now you are familiar with different types of systems we have and uh, in my next video i will be discussing the types of macroscopic properties that is extensive properties and intensive properties and i will also discuss the state of a system and state variables so thank you very much for watching my video and i hope that you have understood what i have taught you today and uh, please do subscribe my channel and uh, press the bell icon thank you very much